Next on Worcester News Tonight, Worcester joins communities across the nation in celebrating National Night Out. Plus, as a trade war escalates with China, stocks drop in the United States. What this could mean for your financial future. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. For nearly four decades, National Night Out has been bridging the gap between police departments and people across the country. Hundreds filled Fuller Family Park to celebrate here in Worcester. And for the city's police department, events like this are what they believe is helping to fight crime. Our Cam Jandro has the story. For Worcester Police Chief Stephen Sargent, National Night Out is a chance to fight the stigma around law enforcement. Those perceptions of, of us against them, that, that does not cut it. It is definitely where together we want to solve all these problems together, whatever the problem is. The city participated in the nationwide celebration aimed at building relationships between the police and citizens. Earlier this year, the department released crime statistics for 2018, which saw drops in homicides, shootings, and robberies. Sergeant credited those relationships as factors behind the crime decline. We always say you're our eyes and ears, but you're also our friends. You're also we're also there for for uh, a water at the fence if we're walking by. I think there are many parts of this country where there's still a lot of tension and a lot of uh, sort of concern when it comes to law enforcement in the community about who's who's looking out for each other. Here, you don't feel out at all. The Worcester Youth Violence Protection Initiative reports youth crime has also seen a significant drop at 13% in the last three years. And with celebrations like National Night Out, District Attorney Joseph Early Jr. says those numbers will only get better. So what these kids get to see is a police officer who might look like them, might talk like them, might be sitting on a horse that they'd love to sit on themselves. And it makes the police, I think, less confrontational. The country saw two mass shootings over the weekend, which claimed the lives of more than 30 people. Days after, law enforcement officials in the city still feel secure about Worcester. I definitely feel safe in the city of Worcester. I feel extremely safe in Worcester, always have, and I don't think it's by chance. Do I feel safe in Worcester? Hell yes. Now, while Chief Sergeant says he feels safe in the city of Worcester, he isn't exactly satisfied. He says he won't be satisfied with how safe the city is until there's zero crime. But he is, in fact, happy in the direction the city is moving forward. In Worcester, I'm Cam Jandro, Worcester News Tonight. UMass Memorial Medical Center's Neonatal Intensive Care Unit is celebrating a safety milestone. Tuesday, the NICU celebrates one year of being central line infection free. Dr. Larry Ryan says central lines are special IVs which go near the heart and if infected, they can cause complications. He says while infections are preventable, the number of infections is not always zero. He says hospitals, including UMass, try to keep the number as low as possible. And so when you can show that you can, despite having many sick patients who need many central lines, can go a certain duration without having an infection, that's considered a, a big milestone. For us to go one year without one, it's a huge achievement. Drew? New mothers at the hospital are grateful to hear the news. Uh, the nursing staff here has been amazing. It made me feel comfortable even though he was five weeks early. Dr. Ryan says they pay very close attention and have a ticker above their huddle board keeping track of each day without an infection. Farmers markets across the state are celebrating this week. State agricultural officers visited farmers markets in three different towns, including Hudson. The markets provide access to fresh locally grown foods and products. During farmers market week, officials say they want to spread the word about the impact they make in a community. Farmers markets are a wonderful way to get food, um, in part because you can have a direct conversation with farmers and food producers, and you can um, you can trust the relationship that you have with them and with the food that they're producing. It's fresh, it's local, you support the local economy. Massachusetts ranks fifth in the nation for direct market sales with over $100 million annually, which accounts for more than 21% of the state's total sales of agricultural products, the highest proportion in the country. 
Stocks rebound today after the single worst drop for the market this year. Financial experts say while investors may be alarmed, there shouldn't be a major concern. They say the trade war in China is to blame. Our Brittany Schaefer has the details. The Dow Jones Industrial Average drops close to 800 points Monday, marking the single worst day for the stock market this year. I think investors were uh, surprised by the, uh, the size of the drop. However, the tension uh, in the trade negotiations has only been ramping up. Stocks falling as the trade war between China and the United States heats up. Monday, China's currency sank to an 11 year low compared to the U.S. dollar. Carr Financial Group President Richard Carr says the drop is alarming, but nothing to worry about. Almost everybody's portfolio includes some investment in stocks, particularly U.S. stocks. And as a result, yesterday was unnerving for most investors. But in the long run and in the bigger picture, it was a, a, a small event. Gary G says his 401k isn't focused on the long run as he retired a few months ago. He says he's fortunate he cashed out before this drop, but knows the hardship of losing money in the market. Same thing happened to me back in 2009 when it crashed. And all, I basically, my at that time, was wiped out my 401k. Basically, I mean, not completely, and it took a long time. It took 10 years, basically, to rebuild it. Uh, and so, fortunately, I was in, the, in that big rise when Trump initially came in, when the stock market uh, took off quite a bit. I'm personally not very worried uh, about the drop in the market. Uh, I think it's just... Uh a momentary blip on the radar and everything's going to be okay. Carr says to avoid investing in U.S. products because they are now more expensive to millions of Chinese consumers. He also says the worst mistake is for investors to make a rash decision. Especially one that affects maybe your entire allocation is a mistake. And historically, we can actually point that out uh, for folks that um, making wholesale changes to your allocation is never a good idea. But rebalancing will help you earn a better rate of return over time. As for Tuesday, the stock market rebounded with the Dow up 312 points. In Worcester, Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. State police are investigating a fatal crash on Route 290 in Marlboro. Police say it appears a car rear-ended a Connecticut man's vehicle, causing it to enter the median and roll over. They've identified the victim as 55-year-old Lee Johnson. Two of his passengers, a 22-year-old female and a 14-year-old male, were brought to the hospital for minor injuries. The cause of the crash is still under investigation. A Shrewsbury man is ordered to pay $480,000 and to stop operating a pet shop. The Attorney General's office says Heath Morse sold dozens of sick puppies out of his home. Attorney General Mara Healy says he knew he was selling people sick and sometimes dying puppies. Healy filed a lawsuit against Morse and his six businesses in November of 2018. She says more than a quarter of the puppies sold died, many within a few days of purchase. Worcester is once again offering a free program for kids. Recreation Worcester includes athletics, arts, and academic programming. Leaders say without state funding, it wouldn't be possible. As our Erin Keating explains, today's Senator, Senator Harriet Chandler was recognized for her work in the program. Summer is in full swing for kids at Recreation Worcester. And new funding from the state ensures there is plenty for them to do. The kids here uh, are, have everything from learning skills to having some leadership training and it's really good and it keeps kids from just sort of hanging out and doing nothing. City Manager Ed Augustus recognized Senator Harriet Chandler for her support. Recreation Worcester is a free year-round program for kids between the ages of 7 and 13. Senator Chandler worked with the state to get the necessary funding. She says it benefits both kids and their parents. I think getting them involved and getting and making sure they're safe when parents, so many parents work, uh, makes a huge difference. The program is in its fifth year. More than 1,800 kids are split between 10 parks throughout the city. Augustus says Senator Chandler's work with the state has helped expand what they can do. Funding is necessary to hire the staff, to pay for the supplies, uh, to get the food. Uh, so it's that partnership between the state and the city. Without Senator Chandler, there would be a lot of kids who wouldn't have the great program this summer that they have. Raquel Castro Corazzini is the director of the Division of Youth Opportunities. She says state support has allowed the city to design a new program for kids once they become teenagers. 
that's a really big deal for that population that is too young to work, um, but too old to be in the program. Where do they go um, between the ages of the 13, 14? Um, and so we've been able to do something that's called a counselor and training program um, that allows them to continue participating. You'll see them walking around um, in orange shirts. They get to be leaders in the program that they were once part of. And on a beautiful August day like today, this is where I'd like to be. The Division of Youth Opportunities is offering a free transit pass for kids ages 9 to 24. Recreation Worcester says it's a great way for kids to get to camp in the summer. In Worcester, Erin Keating, Worcester News Tonight. State police issue a silver alert for a missing 62-year-old Worcester woman. They're asking for the public's help finding her. She was last seen at the Worcester Health Center on Friday. Police say Mary Montesino disappeared from the health center on Oriole Drive. She's described as a Hispanic woman, 5 feet 6 inches tall, weighing about 200 pounds with gray hair. Montesino was last seen wearing a multicolored flower shirt and green pants. Anyone with information on her whereabouts is asked to contact the Worcester Police. This week marks 26 years since the disappearance of Holly Peranian. The Grafton girl was 10 years old when she went missing. She and her brother had been visiting their grandparents in Sturbridge. Her family says she did not return from a nearby spot and her father immediately reported her missing. Holly's remains were eventually found by hunters in a wooded area in Brimfield in October of 1993. Her, killing has, her killer has not yet been found. Paxton police are crediting the work of canine units and new technology and helping them track down a suspect in a violent traffic stop. One of their police officers was injured when they stopped a man who had a loaded firearm. Police say the man resisted arrest. Canine units from Rutland and Worcester helped officers find the loaded 9mm handgun. Paxton police used the canines and their infrared camera technology to find the suspect. The injured officer was treated and is okay. The Second Chance Animal Shelter mobile van was on the road Tuesday, showcasing some of their puppies up for adoption. One of their stops was outside the Channel 3 studio. The purpose of the van is to get the word out on the shelter and help the pets get adopted. And today, that's exactly what happened. Connie, an Australian cattle dog mix, found her forever home. And I didn't know this was coming, but I, I needed a dog. Because uh, I knew eventually I was going to adopt them, and this was perfect timing. This was probably the best thing that could have happened today. Thursday, the van will be in Oxford, and Friday, it will be in Sturbridge.